Welcome to Grand Sumo Breakdown, the unofficial sumo podcast for official sumo fans. Welcome to Grand Sumo Breakdown. This is Ryan. This is Jake. And this is going to be our first ever attempt at doing a kind of Bonske prediction episode where I just get to sit down and talk for hopefully 20 to 30 minutes. And I drew the short straw this time, so yeah, I guess Jake, I'm here too. Jake is here to... <laughs> who knows why? We'll find out as we go on. So pretty much I'm going to jump right into it, but I do want to explain a little bit the kind of rule of thumb that I use and has been pretty effective for determining how big a jump somebody's going to get or how large a fall somebody's going to get. So basically, if somebody has an 8-7 and seven record... There's a one. There's a difference of one between wins and losses. So I figure about one to two, they're going to jump. If they're six and nine, there's a difference of three between their losses and wins. So they're going to move about three to four on the bonds. Okay, that's kind of the rule of thumb that I use, and that's proved fairly effective. But let's just jump right into it, and I'll probably explain a little bit more on this first episode if anybody's never re even looked at a bonds K or knows how it would get put together. There's a few things that I've learned, so I'll probably go into a little bit more detail this time. And if we like this on the next episodes, I won't do that. Sure. And and I mean, we cover a little bit of this during our recap episodes anyways, but um, we just wanted to ha- have a more, some more dedicated time for it because it is super, super fascinating. It's, it's a, a really fun way to analyze how things are going to change for the next Basho. Um, and we just don't want to use up our entire recap episode for it. Thanks, Jake, for lying and saying that you think it's fascinating as well. I'm doing my best. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So for the Yokozuna rank, we are going to have Hakuho followed by Kakuryu. And how the Yokozuna rankings work is basically whichever Yokozuna did best in the last Basho, they're going to be the top rank Yokozuna. So obviously Hakuho, having gone 15-0, and 0, he's going to be the East Yokozuna, and Kakuryu will be the West Yokozuna. And that's basically just a prestige thing, right? As far as I know, yeah. Yeah, like the east side is more prestigious than the west side, but yep. when there's only two, it's not like there's really much of a difference in how, they're, how their matchups happen. They're going to face the same guys. It's just better the, to be on the east. Only thing I can think of is that probably the Yokozuna, the top-ranked Yokozuna is probably going to have the Musubi no Ichiban or the final match of the day on the first day, and then it just rotates every day after that. Oh, okay. So that might be the only thing that affects. I'm sure there's... Maybe another thing or two. Not Pro- super important, though. Probably bragging rights. Yeah. And Ozeki get the same treatment. They're reshuffled every Basho based on their records. So Goedo is going to be your Ozeki 1 East, having a 12-3 and 3 record. Takayasu with a 10-5 and 5 record will be your Ozeki 1 West. And making his Ozeki debut is going to be Takakesho, the Shin Ozeki. And I did a little bit of research to confirm this. Shin Ozeki are always the lowest ranked Ozeki if it is their first Basho as Ozeki. So Takakesho will be your Ozeki 2 East. And that was just just made official. Like we knew it was going to happen, right? But they yep. waited until uh, they waited until the Wednesday after the Basho to make it, you know, a hundred percent. Yeah, they do. Because the Bonske is already made. They're just not going to tell us what it is until two weeks until the Basho starts. Those teases. Yeah. But for people, like, if you're going from Makushta to Jurio, they want to make those announcements so that you have time to get ready for your new role or what responsibilities. Yeah. And same thing with a jump, like, from Sekewake to Ozeki or Ozeki to Yokozuna. They make those announcements early so people can do all the proper. Uh, ceremonies and all that fun stuff. Cool. Uh, jumping down to the Sekewake rank, we are going to have Ichinojo being the Sekewake East and Tochinoshin dropping down to Sekewake West. Did a little bit more research and the Sekewake, the Ozeki dropping is always the bottom ranked Sekewake. And that's because he got two losing records in a row, right? Tochinoshin is- was... Kadoban, which means he his rank was in danger, but then he had got another Makekoshi or losing record in a row, so that's that's what bumped him down. But he gets he he does get a free shot at Sekewake, right? He doesn't exactly. go any further than that. Even if like Terra no Fuji, where he was injured, I'm pretty sure, and I don't know how many wins he had in his bot his last basho as Ozeki, but it wasn't very many. Mm-hmm. he still only dropped to Sekewake because you have that chance to get 10 in the next Basho to automatically regain your Ozeki rank. 
So that's where Tochi Noshin is at. And we talked about it a little bit on the review episode, but there is not going to be a third Seki Wake, or at least I don't think there will be a third Seki Wake slot created just because the past two times that we've seen it, Kota Shogiku and Terano Fuji, that had happened. Uh, Those uh, were kind of special circumstances, though, yeah, right? Yeah, and we shouted him out on the review episode as well, but Wata did a really good job of helping us out with some research to prove that it's not always the case. So like we said, Kota Shogiku, when he was demoted, Takayasu was a Komusubi. He got 11-4 and four record. That's a deserving record of going up to Sekewake. And then... The other Seke, well, one of the Sekewake had Kachi Koshi, so he's not going to lose his Sekewake rank, so they kind of needed to open up that third slot so it was fair for everybody. When Tera no Fuji was demoted, both of the Sekewake were Kachi Koshi, so they're not going to demote or demote one of those Sekewake so they create that third slot. Gotcha. So it seems like Sekewake is a little bit flexible to make it, because if an Ozeki is dropping down from, if they've lost their Ozeki ranking, they have to be Sekewake but they want to make sure it's fair for the other people if they performed up to par two. Yeah, and even if, say, that Takayasu won where he was Komosubi and got 11-4 and four, and the two Sekewake also happened to get Kachikoshi, they might open up a third slot for him because he deserves to be that rank as well. That You're not going to see that very often, but I going back through old Bond's case, I know that there are three Sekewake or sometimes three Komosubi slots for people that deserve those extra ranks. Interesting. That, that would be... It would be very interesting to see, less from a sporting perspective and more from a Bonske nerd perspective, just to see like what situations could result in a third Sekiwaki. Yeah, we obviously have only seen it with Ozeki dropping recently, but there are some cases recently that Wata pulled up for us that proved that you don't always get that third Sekiwaki slot. When Baruto was demoted, both of the Komisu- Komosubi were Makekoshi, and one Sekewake was Makekoshi, so you didn't need anybody to jump up to Sekewake. You needed one Sekewake to go down, and so there was no new Sekewake slot created. And I know, uh, like we said before, East versus West isn't super important, but East is a little bit better. Yes. Um, so do they do the Ozekis always drop down to the lower Sekewake slot, that's, at least that you found so far? That's what I've seen, yeah, because they're going to have a losing record. So they're going to be the lowest spot. I know Koto Shogiku, Tera no Fuji, they were both the third Sekewake. So I would fully expect Tochi no Shin to be the West Sekewake in this case. And the reason why Ichi Nojo is getting that jump is because I believe nobody... He, I mean, he was the first guy to have a winning record after Takakesho was going up to Ozeki. And so... He's the only guy to fill that spot. It just really, really helps that he happened to go 14-1 and one and would have jumped <laughs> over a lot of people anyways. Yeah, so it seems like it would have to be a pretty severe set of circumstances for him not to make the jump almost all the way up to the top there. Yeah, exactly. So let's go down to Komosubi. We're going to slot in Aoyama there, and he is going to be jumping over a few guys with an 8-7 and seven record. But like I said, 8-7, and seven, you're probably only going to expect them to move up one to two slots, whereas Aoyama had a 12-3 and three record. According to my little rule of thumb, we are going to have uh, nine, expected like nine slot jump for Aoyama, and he is going from Magashira 7 up to Komosubi, so that makes perfect sense. So we're going to put Aoyama in that Komosubi east spot. And for Komosubi west, there could be an argument for two people there. You could either put Kodo Shogiku, who would be jumping up from Maegashira 8 up to Komosubi after an 11-4 record, so we'd expect about a 7-slot jump, which would put him at Maegashira 1. Or we could have Mitaka Yumi, who had a 7-8 and eight record there, and, I mean, that could be a half. We've seen them just slide over that kind of half rank to the west side, and that's kind of what I've got slotted in there. I don't think Kodo Shogiku is going to quite make that. Right, because Mitakiyumi was the East Komosubi, mm-hmm. but with only one loss more than win, that that small demotion might be enough for him. Yeah, and I think it would have been Kodo Shokiku had he won his last match, and because he had a special prize on the line for that, which mm. to me kind of makes me think that he needed to prove just a little bit more, and so he didn't win that last match, so maybe he's not going to make that Komosubi jump. It, it's really pretty close between those two who gets that gotcha spot. but you think if kota shogaku got that one last win to get up to 12 he would have been 12 and 3 he would have had a special prize i think he easily would have taken that komosubi spot but i'm also pretty sure it's not the same people who decide 
who gets special prizes and who makes the Bonske. So that could be a completely off line of thinking, but who knows? All right, let's move on to the Zone of Death or the rest of the Joy rankings. And so at Maigashira 1... Uh, why do we call them the Zone of Death? Uh, because they are going to go through a freaking meat grinder like they did in this <laughs> past Basho, where we didn't have anybody in the Maigashira ranks that were in the Joy have a winning record. And this is generally defined by who is going to have to face the Yokozuna. The All the Yokozuna, all the Ozeki, Sekewake, yep, exactly. Down to generally Megashira 3, depending on how many Yokozunas and Ozekis we have. Exactly. The Joy ranks in the Maigashira have kind of grown as we've lost Yokozuna. And we've lost a number of Ozeki. We're down to three when we previously had four. But I guess that was over a year ago. So never mind. <laughs> Starting at Maigashira 1 on the east side, we're going to have the aforementioned Kodo Shogiku. And then on the west side, we're going to just drop Hokuto Fuji down one rank from Komosubi west to Maigashira 1 west. He only had a 7 and 8 record. And they tend to not drop people out of the Sanyaku ranks too far unless they have an absolutely horrid like three and twelve basho and then this is like another minor one kind of like mitaki Yumi, exactly right? he did it, okay it's seven and eight like yeah. i said using my rule of thumb probably don't expect them to drop one or two ranks so mike Shear one makes a lot of sense this one i have almost changed for mike Shira two east a couple of times this afternoon as I've thought about it, but I'm going to just stick with what I have. Stick to your guns. Yeah, exactly. I got Chio Taidu going into Maigashira 2 East, and that is because he is eight. And, he was 8-7. and seven. He has a winning record, so he'll go up. It's going up three slots, which is a little bit above what I'd like to see for somebody with 8-7, and seven. but there's re- he's the first person that has an 8-7 and seven record for a couple of ranks, then the next one would be Nyuden at Maigashira 11 with a 10-5. and five. I don't think he's going to jump all the way over all of those guys. And then you got to look at people that are going to be coming down from above. And so we've already placed Mitakeyumi and Hokuto Fuji, so then we're looking at Tamawashi with a 5-10 and 10 record. I could almost see him being put here at Maigashira 2, but... I want to punish him a little bit more for a 5-10 yeah, record. Yeah, that. take that, Tamawashi. <laughs> so we're going to put Chio Taidu at Maigashira 2, and then at Maigashira 2 West, we're going to put Endo. Once again, 7-8, and eight. doesn't deserve a huge drop. He was at Maigashira 1 before, so we're just going to drop him one rank. And that's between Chio Taidu and Endo, you're just kind of balancing like how much you think guys should be rewarded versus punished, right? Like, if you were to switch these guys, one of them who had an 8-7, and seven, one of them had a 7-8, and eight, That'd still be pretty close, right? Yeah, I, I really don't care who's east and west for the most part. Okay. Uh, but you like Chio Tyru more than Endo, so maybe that's it. You know, I don't know that that's true. Really? Yeah, I think I'd prob- I think I'd probably like Endo a little bit more than Chio Tyru. Had them both on my fantasy team this time, and, well, one of them got me a winning record, but I still prefer Endo. All right, let's jump down to Magashira 3. I've got Daisho on the east slot, 7 and 8, only dropping down one rank, and then I got... At the west slot, I've got Tamawashi falling in here. Previously, when I made my bonds case, I probably would have dropped him down maybe a little bit more, but I have learned from the likes of Tamawashi and Miyogiryu that you don't always fall as far as you think somebody might out of the Sanyaku ranks. You think maybe they give those guys like a, a, a little bit of the benefit of the doubt? You know, they don't drop them as far just because they had reached such high highs? Yeah, exactly. So in Aki 2018... Tamawashi was Komosubi East, and he went 4-11. and In the next Basho, Kyushu, he only dropped to Maigashira 2 West. Interesting. Okay. And then same thing pretty much in Hatsu, just this past Basho in January, Miyugiryu was Komosubi East. He went 5-10, and and then for Haru, he only dropped to Maigashira 2 West. So maybe that Maigashira 2 West is where I should have put Tamawashi, but damn it, we're just going to stick with the Maigashira <laughs> 3 West and probably be wrong that elbow breaking bastard he can drop down a little bit further <laughs> exactly and rounding out the joy we have Maigashira four east okinoumi with a, an eight and seven record in haru jumping up one spot and that wraps up the joy and so oh, that's two spots for him going from six oh, to yeah, four it looks he's like he's going six to four so yeah two but again, spots but this is still just the consequence of so many guys in the komasubi to Megashira three that just did terribly right exactly yeah because the people that are ahead of him that could drop into that slot to take that spot from him you have 
Kaisei, three and twelve. Nishikiki, four and eleven. Tochio's on three and twelve. Oh. Shodai, five and ten. Those guys got to drop way further down the bounce cakes before we even think of putting them there. Yeah, ouch. And then this is a spot where maybe you jump Ryuden up ahead of him, but I'm, I'm going to stick Okinoumi there to finish out the joy. And so we're going to go to just kind of the mid bonds K. These are just guys that are going to go up against rank and filers for the most part, maybe face a couple of people in the Sanyaku ranks, depending on how well they're doing and how their records match up in the second week. But this is just going to be a mega shear meat grinder. Yeah. And, and just from your, your tone and the way you've been talking about this, it sounds like this, the, the top of the bonds K is where you're almost positive of where everybody's going to be, right? I feel pretty decent within a rank or two about Magashira 1 through 13. Okay. And w- you'll see what happens and once then, we get there. Oh, well, yeah, I mean, but the lower we go, the, l- the lower the certainty goes. for At least for this at particular least for this, Bonds game. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Fair enough. So Magashira 4 West, I'm going to have Abi, and he had an 8-7 and seven record at Magashira 6 West. Okinoumi was Magashira 6 East. Something that I like to do when I put together my bonds case. If somebody has, if two people have the same record at the same rank, I'm just going to move them up right next to each other. I, there's probably not a good reason to separate them if they were right at that same spot and did the exact same thing. Why would you separate those two? Fair enough. I initially had Miyogiyu at this point. He was six and nine at Magashira two, but like I said, I was thinking about having those two guys jump up together so then i i switched that fairly recently to have abi up there at my gashira five i this is where i've got Ryuden jumping up he was at my gashira 11 with a 10 and 5 record so a six spot jump up to my gashira five east and then as i mentioned before mio Gidu dropping down to my gashira five west my gashira six i've got takara fuji and yoshikaze takara fuji is there he is jumping up from my gashira seven west so one spot jump. Yoshikaze had a 10 and 5 record from Magashira 12. So he's jumping up six slots, but that's well within what I'd expect for somebody with 10 and 5. And we're still punishing Kaisei, Nishiki, Tochi Ozan, Shodai, all those guys for having a horrible Basho. We're still kicking them further down the Bonske. And at this point, we've passed where Onosho was. So we're going to be kicking him down the Bonske a little bit as well. Magashira 7. We're going to bring somebody up. And at this point, we only have three more guys with a winning record to move up. I was just counting it out. from For all the Mega Shira ranks, there are 12 winning records and 21 losing records. Yeah. And I, I, I wow, I, I am impressed with, uh, with the way you've been able to sort this out because I did not realize just the, the complete dearth of, of Gachi <laughs> Koshis. Yeah. Everybody either, there's like a few guys at eight and seven, and then there's a few guys that did great, and then Everybody else did did very poorly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I don't know how often you see it where it's this many more people with losses than winning records. But yeah, it was definitely heavily favored towards people with losing records in this one. So yeah, only people with winning records we have left is a 9-6 and six Meisei at Megashira 11, and then 9-6 and six Tomokaze and 9-6 and six Kageyaki at Megashira 13. So we're going to jump Meisei up probably a little bit more than what he has earned. Well... He's going up four spots, so with a three three win loss difference, that's well within range. So may say at Micah Shear is seven east. And then I think Shodai's getting a little lucky here. I'm gonna be dropping him off at Micah Shear is seven west because he had a five and ten record, which out of all the people at the top of the Bonske that had poor records, that's the best poor record. <laughs> and like I said, we're gonna kick Kaisei down further. We're going to kick Nishikiki down further, even though they were ranked higher. They had worse uh, Bashos. So Shodai only dropping four slots. So not not terrible drop for him. But a, a lucky break, but not a huge lucky break. Yeah, exactly. I almost gave Shodai spot to Shima Noumi, but I had a hard enough time putting Shima Noumi all the way at Maegashira 8 after coming up from Jurio, so I just stuck with Shodai right there. But yeah, speaking of... Uh, he he did spectacularly in Jurio. Yeah, exactly. He was the top ranked guy in Jurio. He had a thirteen to two record. Won the U show there. Second consecutive for him. Second I believe. consecutive U show for Shimanuumi. So I'm fully expecting him to be right in this range. I've got him at Magashira eight East, and it's not without precedent that these guys are jumping up this high. In Nagoya of 2011, there was a Rikshi by the name of Masu Noyama who went 11-4 and four from the top-ranked Jurio spot. He was promoted to uh, Maegashira 9. 
Mako Nami in Natsu of 2009 went 11 and 4 from the top Jurio spot. He was promoted all the way to Maegashira 7. And so Shimanumi has a better record than both those guys to go to 8. So it's it's not unprecedented for him to get up this high, just depending on the situation where there's you know a lot of guys that need demotions and all that. Exactly, yeah. And I w- haven't taken a look at this Bonske, but I'm very curious to see how it shook out for this to happen. But in Aki of 2006, Kakuryu went nine and six from the second to top Jurio spot and was promoted all the way to Maegashira eight. Jeez. Yeah, so found that interesting. (laughs) That'd be a fun one to go back and like retroactively create the Bonds K and see how you can justify that. Yeah, that that'd be very interesting. Same one with Ichinojo when he was at Maegashira ten and rocketed all the way up to Sekewake from Maegashira ten. He had I I remember I remember reading him about that. He had a spectacular debut thirteen and two, and they just said, "Well, all the way to the top." And then yeah, and then he's been middling towards the top since then. Yeah, exactly. But whatever. Maybe maybe the Cocker you won. They're like. Well, this guy's a future Yokozuna, so... Yeah, exactly. They, they knew what we can, they were doing. Since we can see the future, we're just going to give him a huge bump. Yeah. And Asanoyama, I have filling out Maegashira 8 at the west side, only dropping him a half a rank as he was Maegashira 8 east. He only had a 7-8 and eight record, and just I didn't feel like promoting Tomokaze or Kageyaki up to that west spot, and I didn't feel like dropping off Kaisei or Nishikigi quite yet. And so at Maegashira 9... We've got the same thing that we had with Okinoumi and Abi. We had Tomokaze and Kageyaki, identical 9-6 and six records at Maegashira 13. So I'm going to move them both up four ranks to Maegashira 9 east for Tomokaze and west for Kageyaki. Tomokaze was east because he was Maegashira 13 east, and Kageyaki west because he was Maegashira 13 west. No reason to jump Kageyaki ahead of Tomokaze when he was behind him and they did the exact same thing. Right, so you're just... It- you know, keeping keeping the, it uh, consistent, right? The the status quo that those guys are next to each other. No reason to break them up. I mm-hmm. gotcha. And those are the last two guys from within the Makauchi division that are getting promotions. Oh my god! Everybody <laughs> from Maegashira ten down, at least in my bonds K, is either somebody that is getting demoted or brought up from Jurio. Jeez. So. We'll start with Maegashira 10. This is where I'm dropping off Kaisei, who had a 3-12 and record. This is a 9-spot drop for him, so right along with that rule of thumb, along with Nishikigi, that he had a 4-11 and record, 7-spot seven seven drop, right in line with that rule of thumb that I used. I was very tempted to switch these guys with Tomokaze and Kakayaki, just because I'm not sure that they are going to drop Kaisei and Nishikigi all the way down there. But like I said, I felt like being mean to these guys for doing so poorly, so I punished them a little bit more for doing bad and rewarded the other guys for doing good. <laughs> you have all the power here. I, I do. Their their lives are in my hands, truly. <laughs> at Maegashir 11, I put Onosho at the east slot. Almost switched him with Kaisei, and Onosho was another big reason I almost moved uh, Tomokaze and Kageaki. Don't like dropping Onosho six spots with the 5-10 and 10 record. I don't know why. It's only one spot off of the rule of thumb, but for some reason that one feels dirty to me. I think that's because of your personal bias. Probably. That's at least a factor here. So for some reason, (laughs) weirdly, Onosho at Maegashira 11 is one that I don't feel... the. That's probably the one I feel worst about at this point. Or Chiyotai you at Maegashira 2 instead Uh of Tamawashi. Gotcha. You you feel like that one's just a little bit too mean. Yeah. And then I got Shohozan being dropped off at Maegashira 11. He was 7 and 8 at Maegashira 10, so just a one rank drop for him. And then at Maegashira 12, we've got Tochi Ozan finishing our beating of guys that got destroyed at the top of the Bonske. Tochi Ozan dropping nine ranks. And then also putting Yago there. He was six and nine from Maegashira 10, so he's only dropping two spots there. And so now begins the bottom of the Bonds K S show slash the part I'm going to get completely wrong. And a lot of this depends on demotion and promotion between Makuchi and Jurio, right? Yeah, exactly. So Magashira 13 East, I've got Chiyomaru. He was the second ranked Jurio guy. He had a 10 and five record. So I'm actually feeling pretty good about how far up he's jumping. I don't have any issues with that. Uh, Magashira West 13. I've got Sada no Umi, who was five and 10 from Magashira nine. Only dropping down four ranks. That kind of evens out with Onosho dropping down six. Evens out to five. It's perfect. The math works. Yep. It checks out. And then I don't 
normally wouldn't be jumping him up this high, and it's not because... Okay, it's a little bit because I love him so dearly, <laughs> but I have Enho jumping up to Maegashira 14 East. He was only 8-7 and seven as the fourth-ranked Jurio guy, but really there's no one else that we can demote from above him to take his spot. Literally, there's no one else above him in the Bonske that had a winning record that we could put there, and there's no one left... There's that, no one left that you can demote that I could to pull that down. spot. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. So it's just Enho. That That's all I have left at this point. <laughs> You've run out of guys. Yeah, exactly. And then I'm going to actually do a little departure. I don't remember what rank I said I had Tokushoryu going in the review episode that we did. But looking at this a little bit more last night and this morning, I've got Tokushoryu at Magashir 14 West. He's also coming up from Jurio. He's also coming up from Jurio. He's coming up from Jurio 4 West with a 9-6 and six record. So he's also getting... He's a, also lucking out pretty He's good. also getting a pretty lucky jump. And like I said, I literally changed this at the last minute. And I put him there so I could punish Terutsu Yoshi and Ishiura a little bit more. Gotcha. Because Terutsu Yoshi was at Magashira 14. And he had a 6-9 and nine record. So we're expecting 3-4 to four spot drop. But once again, we don't have enough people that are being pulled from we have nobody that we can pull from on top to push him further down and if we wanted to pull somebody else up we'd have to go with Takagenchi at Jurio 4 with an 8 and 7 record i got you and that's just a little bit too that, much of a that's stretch that's too far that's that's too far <laughs> so i've got i've only got Teotsu Yoshi dropping one slot uh but wait it gets a little crazier cuz at <laughs> Magashira 15 west i've got Kotoweko who isn't moving at all uh, he went seven and eight. This is not without precedent. It happens. Uh, it happened to Toko Shoryu, actually. At Hatsu, he had a seven and eight record at Jurio 4 West, and he was Jurio 4 West again for the Haru Basho. Just because of the way that the Just promotions worked out. Just because of the way out. that it worked out. So I've got Koto Weiko being lucky and staying put with a seven and eight record at Magashira 15. And then I also have Dai Shoho not moving at all. Seven and eight record at Magashira 16. Also, I can punish Ishiura, who had a six and nine record from what he was at Magashira fifteen. So I could drop him a slot because before before what I had, I had Tokushoryu at fifteen, and I was only moving Tetsu Yoshi over from the east side of fourteen to the west side of fourteen. And oh, I, I see. And, and I also had Kodaweko and Daishoho going down like half steps as well, which okay. I didn't like. So this way, we're not really punishing Kodaweko and Daishoho, so that we can. I mean, not properly punished Teretsu Yoshi and Ishiura. They should drop further. They're getting really lucky here. But they're getting a little bit more than those guys. Would you be very surprised if Daishoho and Ishiura were switched? No. I Like I said, when it comes to east and west side, I don't it, care yeah, too much. It, it could just be that like, um, it, it kind of depends on do they prioritize uh, a significant drop for Ishiura or do they prioritize everybody with losing records needs some drop? Yeah. And yeah. I think, yeah, that's that's kind of a toss up. We we don't have the experience to say that for sure, but mm-hmm. um, I think either way would probably make sense to me. Exactly. And for the final Magashira spot at Magashira 17 East, I have Chio Shoma, who once again, just like Kotoweko and Daishoho, went 7 and 8. I considered giving the spot to Ikioi or to Toyo Noshima. Ikioi went 2 and 13 from Magashira 9. Oh, so I guess we were lying uh, when we were talking about Enho. We could have dropped Ikioi to Magashira 14 where Enho is is at, but oh, he had okay. 11 more losses and wins. He need got, more than like a five-step drop for that. It, exactly. And the same for Chio no Kuni, who was at Magashira 12 and completely missed the Basho. You're not going to... He's going down. He's one of the guaranteed going down to Jurio. Sure. Him and Yutake Yama, who had a 3-12 and record at Magashira 16 West, guaranteed going down to Jurio, no doubt about it, replaces Shimano Umi and Chiyomaru. It, it sucks for Chiyono Kuni that he's making the right call by resting his knee. Uh, it was a knee, right? Uh, Whatever I, it yeah, is. Yeah, it was. Whatever it is, it's serious enough that he's, he's resting it for an entire Basho, and I, I really like that decision. It just sucks that he has to be... He has to be demoted so far because of it. And yeah. according to the rules, as as we're aware of them, he absolutely does have to move down to Jurio. But dang it, it, it sucks that the right decision is getting punished there. Yeah. And for Chiyoshoma, with him having a losing record, I considered knocking him down and maybe keeping around Ikioi at Magashira 17. I mean, that's an eight 
spot drop, but having 11 losses, I, I think that deserves going down to Jurio. Same with Toyo Noshima. He was at 5-10 and 10 at Magashira 14, and so he would have only had a three-spot drop. I wanted to punish him more than I think Chiyoshima deserved, so that's why I kept Chiyoshima there. So, yeah, go ahead, Jake. Uh, so that, that means that we have three guys with seven and eights that are just holding their spot mm-hmm. just because of the the garbage all around them as far as as far as finishing records yeah exactly there were other people around them that deserve to get demoted more and there weren't enough people around them that deserve to get promoted as far up to move those guys so i don't know how likely this is i feel more comfortable with this than i did with my previous iteration where i had them all moving down half steps and teretsu yoshi and ishiura just moving down a half step but yeah i i actually I, I don't feel good about the bottom of the pods, okay? We'll, we'll see it's what comes. It's a mess. I feel good about who I have being demoted, with the exception of Chiyo Shoma. Uh, Toyo Noshima. Uh, who else do I got? Uh, Toyo Noshima, Chino Kuni. Ikioi, Ikioi and Yutaki. Yeah, I feel good about those guys. I think if you were to drop Chiyo Shoma, it wouldn't shock me if they pulled up Takagenji from there. Who but, would then be getting a five-step... He would be getting a, a five-step five step promotion for a one win over loss. Yeah, okay, exactly. I see. And you could even go so far as to say maybe Ishiura could deserve it, but then you'd be pulling up Wakataka Kage with an eight and seven record from Jurio Five. Yeah, now we're getting kind that. Of that's wonky. just a little too far. So I I think anything between two to five people dropping from Makauchi to Jurio is valid. I, I, I personally like where I settled in here, but I don't feel confident, as confident as I do about the top of the Bonds K, which for which a couple is spots, usually the top, I mean, is usually a little bit clearer. But yeah, uh, it, it's a lot easier when you have the Yokozuna and Ozeki who, you know, aren't going to drop or if Ozeki does drop, you know exactly where they're going to drop to. And then it's it's a lot easier to figure out, OK, now we have the Sekewake slot. OK, did he win? He's staying put. Next Sekiwake, did he win? Right. He's staying put. Okay, no. Who's the next guy that we can bring up? It's a lot easier there when you... It's not like I could bring somebody down or I could pull somebody up. It's just like, no, one person's being pulled up. That's pretty easy. So it, it just gets harder as it goes down. Yeah, it, it's the right way to do it, though, starting at the top where you have you kind of have like the wall to start building against. You have like a, a foundation to build on where you know what exactly is going on with the top guys, but... If I told you to start a Bonske starting at Megashira 17, that'd be a lot harder. That'd be a lot harder. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that, that wraps up what I think the Natsu Bonske is going to look like. Some people already do this, but I would love to see what other people's predictive Bonskes look like. I want to see how they compare to mine. And then I plan on, once the Bonske is released, kind of going over the Natsu Bonske and comparing it to my Bonske, see what I got right, see what I got wrong. I hold myself accountable on that part. So hopefully we'll have another one of these episodes coming out before the start of the Natsu Basho. Yeah, the the rest of the team here is definitely going to hold you accountable. No, they won't. You, you can, guys don't even you don't pay attention to what I've got. You were forced to sit here <laughs> and bounce ideas off of me. I mean, it is my house, but like that's fair. <laughs> no, I I think it would be fun to see. Um, you're you're definitely the one who's the most interested in creating these. But I I feel like if as a group we can certainly analyze like what what we need to change about our rules of thumb based on the results. That'd be fun. Yeah, definitely. But that's all I got for this time. We'll hopefully have another couple bonus episodes coming out before our Natsu preview. So we'll see you next time. Thank you for listening to Grand Sumo Breakdown. Until next time, throw your salt high and keep moving forward.